So what happens when we want to organize those folders? Well, first of all, I like to tell people there is no right or wrong way to organize folders. And I'm sure there are some IT people and some organizational specialists to say that's not exactly right. But my point here is there's no right or wrong way based on what I tell you. There's only what works or what doesn't work for you. So your organizational structure should be logical and systematic. Think about how you work. Do you work with clients or do you work with projects? If you work with clients, you probably want to organize your folders based on clients. If you work on projects, you use projects. For me, I tend to work with different kinds of software. So I organize mine by things like Windows and Excel, and then within that, different versions. Another way to look at it is how do you currently or how did you file physical pieces of paper? Hopefully you already had a physical file structure that will very easily convert over to an electronic file structure. If a folder begins to contain a lot of files, a lot of individual pieces of paper, that's when you're going to want to add a subfolder to help you compartmentalize. This is actually a very important process. Another important part of this process is your naming conventions. When you name folders and when you name files, you should be consistent, again, so you know where to find things. Let's take a couple examples of how you might choose to organize your file structure. Let's start with maybe a personal computer. Every PC has a My Documents or a Documents folder. In there, you may choose to have a business folder. Maybe you're a home-based business. And then, of course, you also have personal files. For your personal information, you need to keep track of things like finances, and inside finances, you have a lot of them, so you may have organized them by year. So we have a folder for 2008 finances and a folder for 2009 finances. Well, I'm kind of highly organized, so it may be that you choose to just put everything for 2009 into one folder, and that's fine. But I might choose to add some additional folders. I manage several bank accounts, so putting the bank statements into one folder all by themselves is useful. So I'll have a bank statements folder, and maybe one for charity receipts. Within the charity receipts folder is an example of where I would put my receipt for a donation I made to United Way. Then of course I may have other folders like medical receipts, so on and so forth. But you can see here that this is a progression that happens to work for me. I know that all of my personal stuff is separated from my business stuff. I know that in my personal life I have hobbies and all kinds of things, but I want to keep finances separate. And because I have finances that have to be tracked by tax year, I make yearly folders, 2008, 2009. And then to help me fill out my 1040, I know that I need to put things into different folders within that, bank statements or financial stuff, as opposed to charity, medical, and so forth. Now let's take a look at another type of example on the right-hand side. This one actually is going to start at my hard drive, which is my C drive. And I'm going to take you into what I personally do on my business computer. I have a folder on my hard drive called PC Keys. That's everything that has to do with my company, PC Keys Technology Solutions. Then I have a whole variety of things that have to be managed as part of the business. Naturally, I have administrative stuff. Everything that has to do with the physical running, the IRS, all of those kinds of things goes in an admin file. But the main activity of my business is training. So I have a training folder. And inside the training folder, I have folders for each application or each topic that I teach. For example, I have Excel, PowerPoint, and Windows. Now, I've been teaching for almost 16 years, so I've taught a lot of Windows classes, all the way back to Windows 3.1, which was way back in the days of DOS, oh my gosh. So I need to also further organize Windows class materials. I'm not going to go all the way back to Windows 3.1, but we'll just say that I still teach things for Windows Vista, and of course now I'm teaching things for Windows 7. I want to keep those two classes separate. Within Windows 7, I actually am teaching a PC Fundamentals course, this course having to do with primarily Windows 7. And eventually I also have the course outline, which is from which I am teaching this course to you now. So as you can see, that looks very complicated. And some people say, oh my gosh, do you really need all of those different levels? The answer may be no. If you don't save a lot of files onto your computer, you may be perfectly happy saving everything just into your My Documents folder. But remember my piece of advice. 
which is when you start getting too many files to make that easy to use, then you start adding subfolders. In this case, I have PC Keys, Admin, Training, Windows, and Windows 7. I'm five levels down, but I guarantee you that when I want to find something about a Windows 7 class, I know exactly where to go to find it. And that really is the key. We don't want to waste time searching for things. And your computer can literally have tens of thousands of files between your data and the system files by the time you're all done with everything. So organizing your files and your folders into a structure that makes sense, in my opinion, is absolutely critical to being able to efficiently use a computer and find what you're looking for. How do we describe that, though, to a computer? Because in order to locate a file, the computer must know exactly where to find it. You can't just say, uh, kind of go to my hard drive and search until you find it. Actually, there are some search tools to do that, but that's not the best way. The file path designates this exact location. And I like to use an analogy, which is it's kind of like uh, giving people directions. If I have somebody in my house and we're sitting in the living room and I want to say, go get the milk from the refrigerator, I can say, could you please get the milk from the refrigerator? Okay, well, that's easy enough. People can look around. They could say, okay, the kitchen's right over there. There's a refrigerator. All I need to say is that. If I wanted to be more specific, though, and if I wanted to say, turn off the light in my office, I would probably have to give them more directions. I would have to tell them where my office was within the house. If they were out in the city, I would have to give them even more directions. I would have to say, go to this address on this street. And if they lived across the country, I would say, go to this state, then go to this city, then go to this street, and then go to this number, and then you can find my office. You get the idea. The farther you are away, the more specific your instructions have to be, and computers need to have specific instructions. The file path starts at something called the root drive. In other words, what is kind of the most generic or top-level drive that it works with? It's then going to indicate all of the folders, subfolders, and finally ending with the actual file name that you're looking for. So in my example, go to Idaho, go to Boise, go to Fuchsia Place, go to my address, go into my office, which is in the southeast corner of the house, and turn on the light switch on the northeast wall, something like that. All of the components that are part of the file path are separated by a backslash. Now, if all of this seems technical, it's because a lot of times people really struggle with this, so I want to give you an example. If I had something on my C drive, in my documents, in a folder called My Stuff, and I was actually looking for a picture, this is an example of what the file path would look like. C colon backslash, my documents backslash, my stuff backslash, my portrait dot jpg. This tells the computer exactly where it's at. Of all the drives it has access to, it's on the C drive. It's then in a folder called my documents, in a subfolder called my stuff, and finally there's an individual file called my portrait dot jpg. See how easy that is? Well, guess what? We actually have something now that's easier. Windows Vista and Windows 7 and all of the later operating systems use something now called breadcrumbs instead of file paths. Now, this is actually just the default, and it actually comes from Hansel and Gretel. If you remember back to your uh, fairy tales, Hansel and Gretel left breadcrumbs to find their way back home. Same thing is true here. Breadcrumbs allow us to go back within the file path either by going back one level or multiple levels because the breadcrumbs are actually clickable. It also gives us a very logical progression of how we got to a certain location. As an example, instead of all of the backslashes and stuff, it may look like this. You're on your computer. You're on the hard drive, which happens to be the C drive, in a folder called PC Keys, in a folder called Training, in a folder called Windows. When I see breadcrumbs in a window, I actually could just click all the way back on PC Keys to back out two levels. Or I could go all the way back to the left and click on Computer to get all the way back to my computer. You can see how this is very logical, and it kind of puts it into, you know, less technical terms. But the fact that it's clickable is what I really like about it. It makes it much more usable than having to click on going up, going up, going up, just to get back three levels. If you want to see the actual file path, though, you can. You can click the little folder icon that's always to the left of the breadcrumbs. And it looks like this. 
By clicking on that, it will convert the breadcrumbs into the good old fashioned C colon backslash stuff that we're used to seeing. Regardless of which one we're using though, remember that all this is doing is telling you the exact location of a certain file or where you happen to be at the moment within your file structure. And that's the important